thank you so much for asking um, what I believe in. And um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about my story. So my name is Susanna Callister and I was born in Germany. I did not know my parents for a while. My mother um, appeared at our house. I grew up with my grandparents, Peter and Maria, and my mom appeared at the house when I was 10 with um, three other siblings. That was an experience, as you can imagine. And my and then I got curious, thinking, well, there must be a dad as well. No, I was always curious. And I actually found my dad when I was 12. Um, so there were circumstances beyond my control, and I was very, very grateful that uh, my grandparents took us in. So that it was me and my brother Michael. So I, yeah, I grew up in a house that was not full of any communication. My grandparents were really, really beautiful people. They looked after us. They gave us food. They um, made sure we had a clean house and they tried to teach us values. My grandparents were also very old when, when we came to them, so I think they were a little bit overwhelmed with what's going on and for uh, what had happened in our little uh, um, town, there was a lot of things that were unspoken. So anyhow, so I was very lucky to be there. I was always the one that was super curious. There were no books in our house. That wasn't the thing that my grandparents did. Um, so I would walk like half an hour into town and go to the library and get books. I was always really, really a curious, curious child and always was into reading and introduced to books. Um, by one of my good friend's mums, actually, and I would spend a lot of time at their house. I ended up um, running away from Germany and living in South Africa when I was 17 with a boy that wasn't very, well, a man, actually. He was far older than me. Um, so, yeah, that was my first experience living away from Germany. And then I returned and studied looked after myself, had like three jobs and paid for my own apartment. So that was, yeah. But anyhow, so my life was very interesting until I met also my, my husband, Peter. He was Irish. I was on a trip with a girlfriend to Holland, to Sanford, and that's where I met him. And before that, I got introduced to Reiki, which was the first things that I started <laughs> to study. So self-development was always there was when I was about 20, I think. And so I, that, like, that was my curiosity. Because I think I had my first panic attack and I didn't know by then that it was anxiety, I think when I was 16. So I had read um, that the Buddhists believe that we only have a certain amount of breaths in our life. And I remember lying there thinking, that's what, that's one less now. And trying to make them as long as I, as I could and then you know holding my breath but of course you can't hold your breath forever otherwise you, you die there and then and then you know that theory is proven so I um remember panicking about this and then thinking about death when I was 16 and starting to experiment with like the Ouija boards and oh like reading all of these witchcraft things and so I was raised Catholic but um, the priest that we had didn't, um, so I would ask all these questions and I'd always get punished for asking all these questions. So that didn't go well, obviously, you can imagine. Anyway, so then I would study all the self-help and the new age things and um, I became a Buddhist at some stage. So when I met Peter, we uh, moved to Holland, so I moved to Holland first to Sanford and then we moved to England where our first daughter was born. Um, and we were running, managing a hotel there. So yeah, so like, and then I started, I studied um, batch flower remedies at Dr. Bash's house. Well, that was pretty cool. Yeah, so I studied homeopathy and then hypnotherapy, past life regression, curative hypnosis. So always, always studied something. Then we moved um, to Spain where our second daughter, Gabby, was born. And that was a beautiful, beautiful time as well. And, um, I had a little bit of a holistic clinic there, yeah, and I would like fly out and also 
teach the dawn method. Yeah, so like, yeah, flower essences, holistic things, spiritual things were always my thing. I do believe that we are here to um, thrive. And I do believe that we're here to learn lessons in our lives. And I do believe we're here to support each other. And I do believe we're here to support each other, to thrive and live the life to our fullest potential. And I believe that I'm here to actually help people to do that. But I also feel that with my background in um, believing in God and then not believing in God, and then I actually studied Buddhism. I was a Buddhist for a few years and then, you know, finding my faith again. And But, you know, like for me, it doesn't matter if you call it that higher being God or if you call it the universe. I think that's... As long as you believe in something good and you're like trying to treat the other person the way you like to be treated, then I'm good with you. All right. So, yeah, so I do feel we're here to help. And I'm also like writing. So, my first book, so I've written a few books over the time. So, my first book oh, was, was this Reiki and More for Kids. That's been quite a while. So, it was all about children and my. Beautiful girls actually in here with lots of photos, which I love so much. I love that book. My second book uh, was Enter Your Seven Inner World. So this is about meditation, and that came about when I was sitting on a vortex in Sedona waiting for enlightenment to come and strike me. And probably it was a little bit sunstroke as I was sitting there under the one the one tiny little um, little tree trying to get some shade and really perceived like my guides or my angels around me laughing their heads off. And um, so then I started to write down the seven inner worlds. And so this comes well, with like a CD and seven meditations. And um, my beautiful friend Angela made all these wonderful paintings that you find in there. Then... Um, so unfortunately, my husband passed away seven years now. And so I wrote a little book for him, The Amazing Life of Peter McAllister and Why It Was So. And I just, after he passed, this is him. He was like larger than life. He was Irish and I loved him so much. So I was just really scared that um, we'd all forget, you know, like, you want to remember like his favorite color and his favorite food and every moment of how we met and how he was. And I just didn't want to forget that. And I didn't want that the children forget that. So this is why I, why I wrote that, just to honor him and his life. And then my last book, well, so far, because the new one's coming out soon, is Stop Chasing Shadows with the Power of Inner Connections, which um, is a book that, came about when I did my master's and um, I was writing for my master's and I would submit this to one of my professors and then say, this is amazing because you, you need to um, you need to bring that book out. So it's about, um, it's about past life regressions that I did with people. I didn't set out to do past life regression, but they just jumped into a different life and told me stories and their life changed in this life for them. So that's really amazing. So it's about understanding your relationships better and finding ways to get rid of bad habits and knowing who you are, finding your inner connection. So this is what um, I help people with, to find that inner connection. And nowadays I um, help menopausal women, <clears throat> so women in their 40s and 50s, to go through menopause naturally and holistically, which includes a mind, body, spirit process. And I teach them also to finally ditch that weight that I might have been struggling with and not to put on anymore when they go through menopause. And um, I teach them the supplements that help, but I also teach the psychology of weight loss, which is actually the psychology of like why we do things the way we do them and why we can't stop doing some things that we do. So that's like a, such an interesting journey. And so my next book is in the making coming out soon, which is called With Sex, No Drugs and Rock and Roll for Menopause and Beyond. So as you can see, and I also have like a big social media following. I have um, a support menopause group on Facebook. So if you find me, 
um, SuzanneMcAllister.com. That's Suzanne with an S, S U S A double N E, McAllister, M C A double L I S T R. Well, you probably see this here on my video, but anyhow, so I'll link you up to that. So then you go on my um, Facebook page called Wellness Hacks, and then you can find the menopause group, support group. There's thousands of women, they're like amazing, and um, we help each other out. I help them, they help me. I put my knowledge in there, you know, we go through my programs together and um, you sh you're not meant to do life on your own. I don't know who said it about like no man is an island. Definitely no woman is an island. We need connection and we need to um, surround ourselves with like-minded women, like-minded people that are positive and upbeat and that help us through the bad times and that are there for us to celebrate the good times. All right, I hope you got a little bit of an impression who I am now. And um, yes, you can find most of these books still on Amazon, apart from the one I've written about my husband. And um, I hope I see you in my tribe, and I hope I see you in my Facebook group, and I'll see you anywhere online or in any of my live events that I do. So I do retreats for women, and I'm very excited for next year. Keep tuned. All right. There you go. Thank you so much.